I'm actually here undercover. <gasps> March, now. <gasps> I came to Quilt Club to gain the knowledge and insight to help build the best collection of quilting machines brothers made. <gasps> I'm sorry I couldn't tell you I was undercover. Can you find it in your hearts to forgive me? Let's quilt. <laughs> Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. I'm Angela Wolf, Brand Ambassador, and we are taking over the Brother Sewing and Crafting Facebook and YouTube pages. And today, we've got the fabulous Emily Thompson, another Brand Ambassador, and wait till you see the project she has for you. So if you've never been here before, say hi, say where you're from. We always love to see that. And Emily, I'm so excited about this. Hi, I'm excited too. It's I'm always happy to be here, and I wasn't able to make it last month. So I'm super excited about today's project. So I just have a question for you because everyone that's been following you and I on here for a long time, you made some fabulous dresses and outfits for how many, was it 13? If I remember um, correctly. There are 13 grandkids total. I, I think the dresses were nine or eight because then there was a baby and one too big for the dress and, or didn't want the dress and three boys. So yes. And how did it go? Everybody wants to know, how did it go? Did it fit? Did all the outfits fit? They did all fit. It was really great. And you, if you um, want to see the finished picture, they're posted on Life So Savory. I think if you search like cousins or something like that, it would pop up because every year I make these outfits. Although I've got to say, I think I'm done. There's too many kids. <laughs> but um or maybe we'll just do like girls one year and boys or maybe just only boys because there's only three of them um but i've posted their outfits year after year um so it will pop up i think if you search cousins on my website so it's really fun and actually all the dresses fit which i was super excited about because i didn't take any of the measurements i was trusting their moms to measure for me and honestly each dress was slightly different like width length you know i tried to make them each individual so it was really great my only slight issue was my niece who's 14 she wanted like a swing style t-shirt dress and so i had just lengthened a um, swing style t-shirt that i have into a dress and so I kind of modified the pattern and the top fit great, like the actual pattern part. But the part that I had tried to lengthen was I didn't lengthen enough and it was like a mini skirt and she was totally uncomfortable. And so I, I said, well, either you can, you know, put leggings on because it was kind of like a cute legging length, not uh -huh. so much a dress. Um, and or I said, or we could cut it off to be a T-shirt and you can wear it with shorts. So she chose the T-shirt. So. We cut it off. My mom has a sewing machine, so I rehemmed it for her, um, and she wore it as a T-shirt. So that was the only little issue, but otherwise, they all were great. That's awesome. <laughs> Yay, everybody's saying yeah. And I put, by the way, just right at the beginning before we get started, if you look down below on the screen, there's lifesosavory.com. I have all of our websites down there, so you can go there and see your pictures. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait. Yes. Okay. Now, speaking of can't wait, she, Emily and I were talking before here and she held up what she's making today. And I was like, I just went and bought one of those. I should have waited for your show. <laughs> well, I will say you can buy them cheaper. Okay. So this is maybe one of those projects that you're not going to save money on. Um, you know, like many things that we sell, it's not for cheap. It's not for money saving, although you can save money sewing. However, Here's my plug for sewing them is that I pulled out the ones that I sewed a year ago for my kids and um, my kids were in school, in school, not at home, the full year. So these got used like a normal year of school supplies and they are still in perfect condition. So the ones you might buy for super cheap. I'm betting won't last as long as these ones that you can sew yourself. So that might be a little reason to sew them unless you, your kids want new ones every year. So whatever, it's, it's fun. We're going to make um, these binder pouches that can go in your three ring binder and they have 
holes on them. We're going to put grommets in our project today. And um, so we have the vinyl so you can see what's inside it. And then you have your zipper for easy access. So this is one of the ones that I made last year with perfectly um, clear vinyl. But since then, I have discovered this awesome mesh vinyl that is mostly clear, but also stronger because it has this plastic mesh running through it. So I've been looking for fabric like this for two years and have not been able to find it. Now, I will say I only look online. I haven't really like gone to any specialty shops, but um, I love this stuff. And when we lived in Hong Kong, you could buy tons of um, pouches made out of this. And so I was really trying to find this to sew um, things like this with this kind of fabric. So this is a two pocket pencil pouch that I made earlier this year or this school year. Okay. Um, this tutorial is also on my website. So you can just search like pencil pouch and find it. But this one is perfect. And I just love this um, material. And I feel when I'm sewing it that it's, you know, so you can kind of see through it, but it's oh, not yeah. like perfectly clear. So you can definitely see what's in your pouches. So that is a find. And I got a, I got a half yard of it, which was actually a ton of fabric. <laughs> um, so I can use it for so many things. So the window on the pouch that we're going to make today is this <laughs> because Wonderful. I want to try it and I have a ton of this. So um, we'll look a little, it will look a little bit different, but I'm also going to use um, fun wax canvas for the solid part. Of, oh, I just dumped the <laughs> There go the pencils. <laughs> there go the pencils. Um, for the solid part of the pouch, we're going to use wax canvas and then we're going to use this mesh vinyl. Um, this why you got to zip it up. Um, the mesh vinyl for the window. So I cut out all the pieces already and you can download a free PDF pattern with these pieces as printable pattern pieces if you want, or it also has the dimensions if you don't want to print rectangles. But so I do have both options for you. I know some people really like pattern pieces, even if it's just um, rectangles. Um, but I also have just the dimensions. So you can find that and download it. And I actually did, I think, drop the link um, to this tutorial in the comments um, under this video. So you can scroll through or you can go ahead. And I know Angela's listed uh, my site and you can find all the information there. So I think we're ready to get started sewing. So Emily, before we get started, I know there's going to be a million questions about this, yes. about the wax canvas. Now I made a jacket out of it a couple years ago. That fabric is awesome. Yes. And sometimes when you buy it, could you give them a little, I mean, I found it where it's really stiff and I had to like play with it forever to make it soft. Do you have any tips for, I mean, it's not a brother product, but do you have any tips no. for wax canvas? Yeah. So I, I really only um, used this weight of wax canvas um, from a single store. And if anyone's interested, of course, you can message me later or search wax canvas on my site and I'll, because I have only worked with this one kind. Um, I find it's a good weight for like, um, I've made bags and totes out of it. I'm not sure, obviously a jacket would be a whole nother beast. So <laughs> I'm sure you had issues different than when I'm just making a tote bag out of it or like today. Do you notice that like the more you play with it though, the softer it gets and it gets some really cool wrinkles? Absolutely. And when I made the tote bag, there were some weird lines in it. So I did actually sort of crinkle it more. So it looked intentional rather than the couple of random ones that happened when I was sewing. Right. Yeah. That's so cool. Anyways, I just had to throw that out because yeah. I know a lot of people, some are new sewers. They're like wax canvas. What the heck is that? <laughs> it's <awesome>. right. <laughs> So you can see, I mean, this is a fairly like unmarked piece and it will, I'm sure, have many more creases on it after I'm done today. But you can also just sort of pre-mark it, like you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, just get some cool creases. And I think it adds like a really fun dimension to the project and no wrinkles. You know, I hate to iron. So this is a perfect project. <laughs> I would not, I would not recommend ironing that, by the way. No. It will be a huge mess on your iron. Huge. 
<laughs> All right, take it away. <laughs> All right, let me just um, switch the camera over to the one on the sewing machines. There All right, go. thanks, Alyssa. That fabric's pretty. I like it a lot. All right, so yeah. let me bring Emily up. This gray is my favorite. Okay, so I'm also on my computer over here bringing up the tutorial because, like I said, I, I only sew these a year ago and I didn't have to make any more this year because they were all so great from last year. So I need to check actually my own instructions to make sure I'm sewing this correctly for you. Um, what so, machine are you on, Emily? What? What machine are you on? This is the Essence VM5200. Um, the combo sewing and embroidery machine. And I I brought it out to embroider something larger and I never put it away because that was like probably 10 months ago because I love it so much. So um, I have another smaller, more compact also combo, but I only have room for three machines out at one time. So this one has gotten center billing because I have really, really enjoyed um all the things that this one. Has. All the bells so, and whistles. It sews like a dream. <laughs> yes, it's. I at first I would. I don't need it. I'll just keep the more basic one out and pull this one out when I need it. But yeah, I've kind of <laughs> got used to it. So it's really lovely. Um. All right. So a couple of things. We are sewing with vinyl and wax canvas, which are both not your typical materials. Um. So I do get questions about like my needle and my foot. And I will admit I need a vinyl foot. I don't have one for this machine. And that's a little bit lacking when I'm sewing these projects. But it's fairly small and I can make it work with some other like little hacks. So I haven't worried about it, but that is something that I need to get. Um, I am just using a universal needle. So just your basic um not a stretch needle or jersey needle but just a regular size needle and i haven't had any trouble with um that you don't want too huge of a needle on the wax fabric because sometimes you will see the needle marks um especially if they're exposed top stitching or things like that so i'm a little bit cautious putting a large needle on um using this fabric and this is sticky so i do i will be a little bit aware you know, sliding it. If it's really sticky, I, I've put like a piece of tissue paper under there before, and that really does help with the sliding. But we're just making the window out of this. So I think I can make it work today. So we're going to build the front of this pencil pouch, and then um, we will put it all together. So I'm excited about doing that. So um, we're going to start by putting the sides on. And so we have these two um, side pieces. And I'm going to put them on the side of the window. And obviously, it's going to go sort of the long way on the pouch. And then I'm just going to stitch it. I think which side will slide a little bit better here. I'm just going to stitch it with a straight stitch. And the seam allowance that I'm using is the edge of the presser foot. So probably between 1 fourth and 3 eighths. Again, this isn't something we're going to wear. So you can kind of use the seam allowance that you are comfortable with um, because your pencil will fit regardless of if you take a little bit longer or a little bit smaller um, seam allowance. And we're just going to stitch down that. Now I do like to top stitch all of my seams when I'm sewing these sort of pencil cases or pouches because with this thick fabric, it really just helps everything to lay much nicer if we stitch this all down. Oh, you can kind of, I don't know if it's clear enough, see the holes that you can a little bit punch on there. Yeah, we can see that. So, you know, if that was on the outside, you wouldn't want to really any bigger um, marks on there. So that's just why I'm not using a larger needle. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to top stitch and you can either use a zigzag or you could use any of the built-in stitches on your um, machine. Sometimes it's fun to do a little bit of decorative stitching on your vinyl. I'm gonna just use a zigzag because uh, it will kind of hold a wider, the wider um, seam allowance down. Um, and then 
I might have to push it through a little bit because this is the sticky side of the vinyl now up, but we're going to, and then I am using just gray thread. Oh, it's, it slides just fine. Um, gray thread, so you're not actually gonna really see it, but this is where you could really bring out some of your creativity and use colorful threads and um, more fun stitches to add an, an another detail or element to this pouch. So we're gonna go really basic, but there's the top stitching along there. And you can't really see it again because I'm I did use gray. And then yeah, well, now we'll do our question for a quick question. What uh, stitch length are you using for that? So um, I am not changing anything. So when I hit the straight stitch, it's a uh, 2.5 and okay. I'm just using that as is. And then when I hit the zigzag, I also didn't change it. So I'm not sure what that was. I can look when we go back. Um, so I'm switching back to the straight stitch now to do the other side. Yeah. So like I said, I, I, not really using any fancy needles or feet on this machine, not really adjusting the stitches, trying to keep it pretty basic so that you could replicate it on any machine that you have. Okay, and you'll see that this is sticking up a little bit oddly and we'll, we will be trimming some of those um, extra pieces. So when I switch it over to the zigzag, it's at a 1.4 length and a 3.5 width and that's sort of the um, default on this machine. I think most are about that. So I'm just using that. And again, I, I just like the zigzag because it really does hold down the seam allowance, catching a wider width of it. And this thick fabric sometimes likes to, you know, flip up a little bit, but this is going to hold it down really nice and flat on those sides. That looks um, great. Yeah. So there's my scissors. And of course, the top stitching, you know, is always sort of optional, but it just makes everything look so much better. Same as, you know, when you're making clothing, taking that extra step makes a big difference. Okay, so now we have the sides done, and we're going to do the same with the top of the pouch. And you just saw I just trimmed off any little bit that was extra here on the sides so that we have a straight line across now to do the same process with our top piece. Okay, so I'm gonna straight stitch it first. And now we're not sewing on the um, vinyl. We're sewing fabric. Oh, I guess I am sewing vinyl in the middle. But when you sew fabric to fabric, you will notice that it is considerably easier than on the steps where I'm sewing the vinyl, just because it is a bit stickier, but not impossible to sew. All right, and then we will again open this up. And um, those of you who love to iron may be tempted to iron this, but both of these are meltable. So, no ironing in this project. You just have to press it with your fingers, or you'll have melted plastic and wax everywhere. And even if you were using, like in um, my original tutorial, where I used a vinyl, like a, I used a red plastic vinyl and then a clear plastic vinyl. Yeah, none of those, none of those can be ironed. Those are all meltable substances. So you just, <laughs> which is another reason that I'm top stitching to really hold everything in place rather than pressing it in place. Pressing would be bad. That's why I was laughing. I was like, oh yeah, you don't want to try that. <laughs> no, none of these, none of these things would be good at all. I'm trying, I recently, Ironed something that I should not have. I can't think of what it is now, but made a big mess of my iron. It's always not fun. So now you can see the sort of the front of the pouch start to come together. And, um, you know, we still have a few steps, but I think I'm really liking this vinyl in the middle. And we'll have to see when we compare to the other one with the clear vinyl what we think um, when we're finished. So now we're going to put the zipper in. And I'm gonna grab some clips to hold this in place. Um, if you haven't, don't have sewing clips, I really love them for the wax canvas because they don't leave any holes in the fabric. So um, it's a great tool for this type of fabric in particular and for zippers because I always find pins are 
hard to get the zipper to lay nicely. <laughs> that is so true. It gets all wonky, but also those clips are great. Up. Like the knits, all the tops that you make are little things like that. It works great for that. Yes. Um, all right. So I'm changing to my zipper foot so that I can sew nicely along here. And you see that this, this zipper is a little bit too long, but longer is always better than shorter. And this is just a um, inexpensive plastic zipper. So we will easily be able to cut through. If you're trying to get all fancy and using maybe a heavier duty zipper or a metal zipper, you would definitely want to make sure that it is the correct size and a couple inches shorter um, because it will be harder to cut. And so we're, we're actually going to put this in a seam. Um, so we want a nice small zipper for that. All right. So we're going to do a couple stitches to hold this in place. And then I'm going to move my zipper tab out of the way. Oh, still on zigzag. Move my zipper tab out of the way so I can make sure that I am getting nice and close. Uh, my bobbin thread. Okay. <laughs> That's only because we're live. We always run out of bobbin thread. You're not the only one, Emily. You're not. I know. And of course, I never have any made up. So <laughs> while you're changing that, I'll just ask. There's a few questions in here that someone had said uh, when you were sewing those pieces of wax canvas to the vinyl did you when you laid that seam flat did the seam allowance go towards the vinyl part so it did go towards the vinyl part yep so here's the back um you could do it the other way i just find that it actually folds easier towards the vinyl and then when you look on this side um you don't really see it too bad because it just kind of looks like a shadow now um on the clear vinyl I think I actually did press it the other way because you would see it, that seam allowance would be much more visible through an absolutely clear window than this sort of um, foggy one. So that awesome. might be something I didn't actually even think about it. I just sort of pressed it the way that it was wanted to naturally go. But actually, as I'm looking at my tutorial, I did put it the other way. So that's a really good point. <laughs> like whatever you want. Vicky, good question. Uh, flip it one way or the other. It really doesn't matter. Yeah, as long as you're consistent, but that is a that is a valid point on um, keeping that other. Okay, so I did get a couple stitches in, and then while I have this off, I'm going to go ahead and unzip that to move it out of the way. And you already, you already changed your bob, and I was like, not even boom, like that happened in one second. <laughs> I found I found one that was already threaded. <laughs> My goal is to like teach one of my kids how to thread bobbins and then have them just make me up 20, but <laughs> I haven't ever done that. Good luck. I know. <laughs> it could be a big risk. <laughs> I could end up with 20 tangled bobbins, but I never take the time to thread a bunch of them, which is what I would like to do. Okay, so now we can zip this back up and then once again, we're going to fold the seam allowance down towards the um, wax canvas and we're going to top stitch it. And I'm going to switch the feet back. I just love that it's not really a big process to do that. And I think this one I am just going to straight stitch because it will just look a little bit nicer. So. I'm going to um, just straight stitch along there, kind of hitting the middle of the um, folded over seam allowance. So not right, right next to the fold. I'll show you how far away I'm doing it. A lot of these steps will be up to you to figure out, you know, how close do you want it and what do you think looks best? But there's the top stitching along the zipper. So we're just adding that little detail on there. And again, now we really have everything sort of held down flat on this side and no, you know, flopping seam allowances because you are going to be reaching in and out of this to sort of grab your supplies. So kind of keep everything together. All right. So now the next step is to put it all together. And so we are going to lay, take the back piece 
and then center this front couch piece on it, aligning the top. And we will we'll be sewing the zipper with right sides together. So this doesn't really have a wrong or right side yet, but this does and the zipper. So I've placed the right side down on the top and then I'm put a couple clips in and then we'll be stitching the zipper to, with the same process to that, to that other side. So, um, yes, if you have questions, you can go ahead and ask them and Angela can give those to me while I'm sewing. Some of these are repetitive steps, so I don't always have like a million things to keep, keep talking about. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's really good. Uh, just a few people are giving tips that they used a roller for pressing down some of that vinyl, stuff like that. Oh, that's great. Yes. Will you I just say, the I say the name so much. one more time, Emily? Yes. Could you just say the name of your machine one more time? Oh, yes. It's the Essence 5200. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. It's a couple years old, so it's not one of the brand new ones, but and it's not one of the super, super fancy ones, but I sort of love it's in between all the functions that it has. So every once in a while, I'll find something that it doesn't have that I'm like, oh, that'd be nice. But it's a great um, mid-level machine. Okay, now I'm not going to get in trouble because when I was making the pouch just out of this vinyl, I, at this point I clipped my um, zipper to try and keep everything lined up. And then as I was unzipping the zipper so I could turn it right side out, I just went zip right off the end and I had to have my son help me. I was trying to hold the zipper real, real um, tight while he shoved the, the <laughs> I want to say handle, but that's not tab back on. And thankfully we got it back on. Um, but I'm being extra cautious with my zippers since that moment. Um, because that's the first time I've really totally just unzipped a cut zipper. I wasn't even thinking at all. Okay, so now we will straight stitch the top stitch on the other side of the zipper. So many of these steps I know are a little bit repetitive, but then we're going to get where we form the bag and kind of finish up. So I do love, especially last year when I sort of mass produced, mass produced five, so not a crazy production, but it did go pretty quick once I figured out how to sew them and did a few. It was not a long process at all. And you could even do like each step in sort of an assembly line because I'm having to switch my feet and switch the um, stitches. And if you wanted to eliminate some of that switching, you could have everything laid out as you were making several of them. So for some of you who have grandkids, I think this would make a perfect sort of personalized, you know, school accessory. I also made one for my daughter out of the sort of fabric that, you know, only has the black and white lines, then you can color it yourself with fabric markers. And she loves that one. That one's her favorite. So um, she was able to sort of color her own pencil pouch. That's a good idea, Emily. What a fun yeah. project. Yeah. So that's a fun um, fabric to use. Okay. So I'm just Scrolling down here to find the next step to make sure that I do this correctly. Okay, so we are now going to turn this over to, um, so my right side is inside and I will want to unzip this so we can turn this right side out when we're finished. And the thing is, you actually, when you fold over the top, I'm going to leave a little bit of uh, like a half inch of the back piece exposed onto the front. Okay, we don't need that all hanging out here. So we can make a little bit our top a little bit higher. And then the only thing is on this side here where now the zipper is separated, you're going to want to make sure that you really clip it well. It's a little bit of a long piece sticking over there. Clip it really well so that that zipper doesn't slide open at all. Okay, so make sure that that is really attached. And then you're lining up your sides. Okay, so we're lining up our sides. And if, 
Oh, okay. Well, actually, I see what I did. That's a little bit different than I was remembering. Um, okay, so when I got to this point, my tutorial says that now I should just sew the side seams. So I actually didn't even really need to open this because we can open it through the open bottom. Um, but I'm glad I did because when I sew this side seam, I don't really want that tab right by there. So we're going to just use a straight stitch and I have that regular foot on the sewing machine. Again, the seam allowance that I'm using is sort of the edge of the presser foot. So not a huge seam allowance, but not a super tiny one either. Want to make sure that I really get a good chunk of this fabric so that when there's a lot of wear and tear on it, these seams hold strong. Okay, so there's one side sewn and we're going to do the other side the same. Sewing just the wax canvas with no vinyl in the seams is very easy. In itself, the wax canvas is not hard to sew. Now, I don't, if I was sewing in a jacket sleeve or something, I can imagine I would be having a much more difficult time. But we're simply sewing straight seams here, and it is no harder than sewing any other fabric. Um, so I sewed over this zipper once, but just to reinforce, because if a kid is sort of cranking that zipper all the way to the end, I'm going to switch over to my zigzag and just reinforce the end of that zipper a little bit before I cut it off. And it has, you know, with the plastic zipper, you are able to sew over it, but I am always, I think, a little bit more cautious sewing over the zipper teeth, even if they're plastic. Okay, and now I can hopefully clip that and it won't um, give me any trouble. And then like here where you have this long piece, can do that. So let me just check. Okay, so it looks like then in order to turn it, I also clipped my seam allowance. I'm gonna check the tutorial before I start talking. <laughs> seam allowance really close to avoid bulk when we turn this right side out. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and cut off some of this thicker fabric and leave just a nice um, small seam allowance there. So not too close, make sure you don't cut any of your stitches. Um, but enough that this will still hopefully hold securely. And like I said, these, I made them in like three different fabrics last year and they all have held up. So I'm thinking that's a good sign. So now we're going to turn this right side out, crinkle our canvas a little bit more. That's the best part on that canvas. You crinkle away and it gets softer and it gets creases and... <laughs> That could be a kid. That could be a kid. Uh, <laughs> another project. Here, kids, sprinkle yes. the fabric for me. <laughs> yeah, let's get this all, all like it's all distressed and looking great. Obviously, the thicker the fabric, the a little bit more difficult it is to you know get your corners poked out and all those things. But here it is. This is I love this color. It's so pretty. I do too. Um, okay, so now it's starting to come together. We just have the bottom and then the binder clips that we're going to put in. So here's how I did it. Who knows if this is, I don't know, the official way to do it, but it's totally what I did last year and, again, what has held up really well um, for those kits. So depending on your fabric, if it's one, like when I, even when I use the vinyl, I feel like vinyl is, if it gets a hole, it can kind of tear a little bit easier, depending on the kind of vinyl that you are using. And I was using a pretty plasticky one, this red one in the tutorial. So I did put a piece of stiff interfacing and I ironed it right on there. And even though it was vinyl, I was able to iron it because I just sort of touched the tip of my iron, you know, onto the interfacing and didn't like heat up the whole vinyl bag. So, um, I was able to get it to secure to the back side of this vinyl fabric. It wasn't even the right side. So that is in the tutorial. If you feel like your fabric really needs it, then you might want to go ahead and put interfacing in there. This wax canvas, I feel like will be fine with the grommets. Um, so I'm not going to put it in, but you can sort of decide that for yourself, depending on what fabric you're using. Okay. So the next step would be to put in the, um, that interfacing and then we're going to fold in the side seams and fold up the bottom 
my bottom doesn't look like it's cut super straight. Either that or I didn't sew it, but we can straighten it out here. And the, this wax canvas is great because it does, it actually kind of holds your presses. So another reason I love it. And we're folding it up and over the bottom of the bag. It actually will cover part of that plastic. So if you feel like you needed the interfacing in here, this is the sort of one inch strip that you would put that interfacing in to um, reinforce, because we are gonna punch holes in it for the binder. So if you feel like you need that reinforcement, go ahead and do that. Okay, just double checking. Okay, so our next, our last sewing step is to just sew. You can either use a zigzag or a straight stitch, and we're gonna sew on this folded side, which is connecting the bottom to um, the bag. I think we'll go with a straight stitch. Marion said he loves your ideas, even practical for grandmas. <laughs> yes. Well, sometimes if you live, I mean, it, especially if you don't really live by your grandkids, it does get trickier to sew them clothes or other things. So being able to make some of these accessories or other things is a really fun, um, special touch that you can do as well. Just this week, I mailed, mailed off a blanket to my niece. Um, she was born in April, but I finally got around to mailing off her baby blanket. Um, but it is, I, I do love sending those sort of packages in the mail to my family. Okay, so here. Oh, it looks uh, great. Super awesome pouch. And you could totally stop here if you don't need a binder pouch. But I'm going to... Um, show you how to put in some some grommets. So let me come over here and bring the camera. <laughs> I love me. the project. Sorry, I, this is a little bit better than using my computer one because I should be able to get down there. Okay, so here's the bottom of our bag and I have these pieces and a handy hammer, which we will need to put these in. It's also really handy to have some super sharp scissors to punch those holes. So I'm gonna to try to pick out, I didn't get three, three of, you know, sort of the large piece and three of the small piece. We need each side and some of these are stuck together. So, and I happen to have these black ones, which I think will look really great with this fabric as well. Okay. So um, you could uh, measure in an actual binder. I'm gonna take the easy way and put this one on top and then just mark the holes, okay? So just, I'm sort of marking, ugh, the wax is like, not letting my pen mark. Okay, let's grab a marker. Um, There we go. I want a nice bright marking so that I can see that center. So you can see I've marked those holes and you're going to poke through with whatever device you like to poke with. If you have something special, I always just use sort of tiny, really sharp scissors. And the goal is to cut a hole that is big enough for these pieces, but not too big that it won't pull out. So I always start small, and if I need to cut bigger, I do. Caroline loves the color of vinyl that you have. Yes. I, this is definitely could be a good one for my middle school son who isn't so into cutesy things anymore. Oh, Esther has a good idea. I agree. This would make a great makeup bag because you could just wipe it out super quick and easy. Yes. Fabric and vinyl. Yes. The wax canvas is super handy for anything that you do need to be able to wipe. Where's my other scissors? I'm finding, I'm, I don't know if I've ever put tiny holes in wax canvas before. And mm -hmm. um, 
because it's kind of waxy, it's definitely an interesting feel here as I'm trying to cut these little holes. A little bit different than say a vinyl that's a clear cut, right? When you cut it, it doesn't have any strings or pieces with it. Okay, so there's a hole, hopefully not too big, not too small. <laughs> and then we will put maybe too small. Yep, okay, a little bit bigger. That's always better than finding out you're too big. You can't really go back. Yeah, Shirley, you could use a hole punch, but, you know, hole punches come in different sizes. If you're using scissors, you know, grommets come in so many different sizes. This way, it gives you a lot more flexibility, but either would work. Okay, so I've got it squeezed in there. So here's on the back, and then the front is squeezed on, put on the sort of top piece. And then I just have this little hand setter. I don't have anything fancy but we just give it a couple bangs a little shake of the camera and <laughs> there is the one side in so hopefully i can get a little quicker with the other two here but that's the basic idea of putting these in and um now if you live not in the u.s or another place that has two ring binders or something like that then obviously you could easily adapt this for, um, you know, a different amount of rings in your binder. But I think there was actually somebody mentioned that they would put a little handle on the side so they could just wrap it on their wrist. That would be a cute idea, too. There's so, so many options here. Yes. So cute. So lots. I mean, this is just the way I'm using this, but they're really it would just make a cute little zipper pouch for any any use and i'm always one to say you can't have too many zipper pouches so <laughs> always find another use for a cute little thing with a zipper and i love to, to store you know all kinds of things in these sort of bags so for me yes definitely lots of options um so i will say that i right now i'm going through like three layers of the wax and even maybe catching the edge of this final. So if it looks like I'm struggling a little bit, I probably am, but it's not like you won't get there. It just is kind of time consuming to keep picking at the layers, making, I'm really trying to be cautious about not cutting too much. So that also makes me a little bit slower at this. So it looks like I've never done this before. It's not really the case. It's just, I'm trying to be careful and cautious and plus sure, we're live yeah i want to make sure when i'm done here that it's set well and looks like what i want it to look like so all right number two one more to go that just i think that just really brings the whole look together though um, it really makes it look it makes the bag look so expensive yeah <laughs> some cheap little pieces of metal yes yes it does but it <laughs> Um, but so you could also, yeah, like you said, put one like in the corner and then put a strap on it. That is giving me ideas that would be super cute. And I've done, I don't know if you've ever done this, but like in my, when I've made like a beach bag tote, I mm -hmm. will sew in like a little zipper pouch so that things can be sort of held secure in the bottom of my beach bag. Um, so this, something like this might be really cute with a single one and then added inside of another bag, so. That would be a great idea. I have a lot of those little ones just to carry, you know, your wallet, your cell phone, or yeah. well, I don't carry a wallet, but you know, just your credit card, some money. And that oh, way you yeah. just have a little bag to carry. This is such, this is so cute. Everyone's saying, great idea for pencils. Now it's back to school. Yes, back to school time. It is back to school time. And I know, you know, kids start sort of all different times my kids have been back for they went back last wednesday so almost a week in already um crazy crazy that it's that time of year again i agree but this, like, is, no. this is a good back to school project Emily, you explained it so well. Nobody's even asking questions. 
Okay. There we go. Oh, that's so cute. Perfect. Wow. That's the finished result. And then we let's put some pencils in here, see how it looks. Perfect. So I, yeah, I like that you can see enough to see what's in there, but you're not really going to see every, you know, detail like you might in this sort of one. But I think it's a good little, it's a good little combination there. Those are so cute. So cute. Everybody's saying, I love it. I love it. Awesome project. So by the way, I did put Emily's website down below because as you mentioned, that you can download the pattern if you'd like, and that yes. way you can follow along. And if you want to watch the show over and so with her, again, just share this to your Facebook page, or you can come back to Brother Sews or Crafting YouTube page as well. Absolutely, yes. So lots of ways that you can um, find this information again if you need it. It's not Very gone forever. <laughs> That's really cute, Emily. Really cute. I'm going to bring you up by yourself. That yeah. is so. I like that new mesh vinyl. I do too. I just, so the reason I was looking for this is because um, before we moved here, I had bought a bunch of these and I would, all of our puzzles, kid puzzles are stored in these. All of our games, I like take the box out and I put the game board and all the pieces in a larger one like this. Here, actually I have one right here. So this is one that I bought years and years ago for toy storage. And these are my kids like magnet tiles, you know, oh, like these sort of things. Good idea. But, so we, so you can buy them bigger or you could in Hong Kong, but I've looked here and the only place that sells them, although now you can get them online with this sort of fabric for cheaper, um, is um, there was like an upscale organization store that had them, but I was, I'm not paying, you know, $10 a bag or something like that, just to store toys and puzzles. So, um, so I did. So now I'm super excited that I found this, and I can. I haven't made any bigger bags yet, but um, obviously we've gained more toys and more games since <laughs> we moved here. So I don't have pouches for everything. So I really love them for storage, and it makes things stack really easy. And um, so I'm kind of excited to make more of my own size with now that I've sort of sourced this fabric. So I love that. And I saw uh, some of you were asking about the fabrics. So you can go back and watch, but you can always message Emily. That's not a brother yeah. product, but you know, yeah. the, you know the deal. Just uh, message Emily and she'll tell you where it is or go to her website, which is yes. right down so, um, If you just, like I said, search pencil pouch. I recently did a tutorial on this um, like last week. And it mentions the source of the fabric in that post. So, but um, yeah, you can definitely uh, message me as well. And I can give you the information. It's not not anything I'm affiliated with either, just simply a product that I found that I was excited about, so. Very nice. Well, thank you all for watching, by the way. Emily, that was such a fun project. So speaking of projects, uh, and Emily, you don't know this yet, but everybody else doesn't either. So the video for Thursday, by the way, Kathy Gandy's on here and she, we're, the whole theme right now is quick and easy projects just because, you know, we want to be able to sit down and so finish it. And what, what you haven't even been here an hour and you did the whole thing live and your Bob and ran out yeah. <laughs> and you're finished. And so the one on Thursday, Kathy's making an ironing board cover, which yeah. is so cute. It has a little bit of embroidery, sewing, all those things. Uh, you guys are going to love it. So these projects are great and you can go back and watch them. So yeah. Emily, your website's down below. Yeah. Forget you can download the pattern. We so appreciate you watching us today. Uh, brother, thank you for letting your brand ambassadors take over your page because we have a lot of fun doing that. And Emily, it's so nice to see you again. I missed you last month. <laughs> thank you. It was great. And I'm glad it turned out. That's always a plus. So and that's yeah. always that's always yes. a bonus. Very, very cute. And if you have any questions, you can message Emily or Brother Sills. You can yes. leave comments and they'll catch up on there too. So Emily, I cannot wait to, what's our project next month? I think you told me already. Oh, I think I was going to try to take a sweatpants pattern that I have and mash it with a tank top to make myself a romper. That's Ooh. my plan. I have not figured out all the details, but it's a project that I've wanted to tackle. So I was thinking I would tackle it here. Uh, why not? Why not do it live with all of the all the fans that love you no matter what happens? That's a good place to do that. Yes. 
Yes, you guys are the best. So it's a fun place for me to try new things. Awesome. All right, Emily, do you have your live show tomorrow, by the way? I do. Yep. At 1 p.m. Eastern, I will be on and I'm going to be sewing some um, sports pants for my boys or one pair for one of them. I don't know who's getting who's getting it. But yeah, sort of a pattern I've wanted to tweak and update. So I'll be sewing a pair live and sharing that tomorrow. Awesome. Are you 3 p.m. or 1 p.m.? Oh, yeah. Sorry. 1 p.m. my time, 3 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I'm 1.30 <laughs> and you're after. So today, yes. by the way, Cindy Hogan will be on at, I believe, 4.30 Eastern. And then tomorrow, you can catch my show at 1.30. Emily at 3.30 yes. or 3? 3. 3. 3. Yeah. 3. 3. Eastern time. <laughs> and then on Thursday is noon with Kathy Gandy. We try to fill you with so much so information. <laughs> yes. Awesome. I can't wait to see what you're doing tomorrow. Thanks so much. All right, bye everyone. Thanks for watching. Upsize your creativity with the all new, all smart Innovus NQ1700E. Only from your friends at Brother. Demo one at your Brother dealer today.